story that came out on Vox, September 24th, 2018, the waiting list for organ transplants is finally shrinking for a grim reason. So what they're doing is taking advantage of the opioid overdose deaths, and they are now using the livers and organs from those people that die from overdoses. So is it a bad idea? Well, I guess if you're on an organ waiting list, it probably is not a bad idea for those folks. I don't know. I, I don't know if I want the organs of a junkie, but look, I guess they're grabbing whatever they can. And I did stories on this last year talking about how they are starting to use the organs of all of these folks that are dying from drug overdoses. So um, the number of opioid overdose deaths nationwide has doubled since 2008. The number of those victims who have become organ donors has quadrupled, partially as a result of the newly available organs from overdose deaths. The list of people waiting for transplants, nearly 124,000 at its peak in 2014, has begun to shrink for the first time after 25 years of continuous growth. So, I mean, I guess I understand if you got a healthy organ, I guess they're going to just take advantage of those that now die from drug overdoses. So you can see um, 2014, it really wasn't that many people, 2015, 2016, and you can see a lot of red now where um, organ transplant you know, are now being shared from victims of drug overdose. Massachusetts, where Talba lives, may be the epicenter of the convergence of these two crises. In 2016, nearly 2,000 residents of the state died of opioid overdoses, a rate of 2.5 times the national average. Meanwhile, that year, more than one third of organ donors in the state died of drug overdoses, the highest share in the country. That the overdose epidemic would have a silver lining was not a foregone conclusion. It's only been possible due to the gener generosity of overdose victims and their families, clinicians, have also had to adopt new practices to make it possible. And patients who receive such transplants have had to accept additional risk and are often left, like Talba, grappling and challenging emotions about the toll that made their survival possible. How the opioid uh, plague and organ donation became connected. The uncomfortable nexus between opioid overdose uh, plague and the organ donation evolved because it's relatively rare for someone to die under conditions that allow for organ donations, but opioid overdoses often meet those conditions. And you know what? It's so many of them dying I guess they could take care of the backlog because they are dying. And you know, they're lowballing all the numbers that they're giving us. For organs from the dead to be eligible for donation, the donor typically will have suffered brain injuries so catastrophic that they will never revive yet will have arrived at hospital and time to put on a ventilator so they can be put on a ventilator even if they're, you know, close to death. And that continues the circulation of blood to their organs. 
In the U.S., these circumstances occur in fewer than 1% of deaths. That leading cause of stroke, blunt injuries, including car accidents and cardiovascular incidents, now fatal opioid overdoses, which can slow respiration to the point that the brain is starved of oxygen, are a growing part of that list. According to preliminary data, 49,031 Americans died of opioid overdoses in 2017, and opioids made up two-thirds of total drug overdose deaths in the United States. Drug overdose in America, and it shows you the figures, and of course it's going up. I mean, wow. It's just giving you a breakdown on the chart of all drugs, 72,287 overall. And fentanyl, of course, leading at 29,418, heroin, 15,950, and opioids, 14,951. And remember, the CDC only reports on 22 states only. So, you know, it really is not a bad idea. You know, it's better than organ harvesting. So if they can just get organs from all of these people that have died, you know, from opioid overdose, then it cuts down on killing people and removing their organs. All right. So in most cases, by the time emergency responders arrive, the victim is already dead and their organs have lost viability for transplant, but several thousand make it to hospitals and ventilators before being pronounced dead. The victims are often young. Nearly three quarters of inpatient opioid deaths were ages 25 to 54. Far from being a welcome opportunity for the transplant community, Glazer says the devastation presents a solemn responsibility, although it is a silver lining in terms of its impact on organ availability, or at least it is in a region. It is not something we hope continues. An organization like hers continue many other efforts educating the public about opportunities for donations designing systems to make registering as a donor easier, fostering better coordination with hospitals and transplant centers to boost the number of transplants, even if the overdose plague were to wane. Well, it ain't going to wane, okay? It's not going to wane. We already know that. This thing has gone on, what they're now saying, 40 years of nonstop drug overdoses in America. So it's not going nowhere, y'all. But, you know, hey, you know, I, I never needed an organ, but I can imagine people that are waiting on a list and it's a matter of life and death that this is a, an opportunity for them. You know, I don't blame them for wanting any kind of donation, especially if it's a match and you got tons of people dying I'm sure they're going to find a match for everybody that's on a waiting list for organs. But tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I will see you on the next video. I happen to believe this is a good idea. You know, as long as they test everything and the person was not ill, and really the only problem they had was drug abuse. Why not? Peace, family.